Mary Ann Perez was a single mother living in Chalmette, Louisiana. On the 25th of March, 1976, Mary Ann left her home to go to a country western bar on the outskirts of New Orleans where she would meet up with friends of hers. Mary Ann left her eldest daughter in charge of the youngest children. She told them that she would call them at 11 p.m. At 11 p.m., she did call her oldest daughter and informed her that she would be home soon. The children waited, but there was no sign of Mary Ann. Then, at 1.30 a.m., they received a call from a woman who claimed her name was Dorothy. Dorothy told them she was a friend of Mary Ann's and that Mary Ann was having car trouble, but she would be home soon. Mary Ann never made it back home, and the police were called. They went to the bar for any information as to where Mary Ann could be. They found her car in front of the bar, still in perfect condition. Investigators also spoke to her family and found it worrying that Mary Ann had no friend named Dorothy. Three days after she was last seen, her purse was found about 10 miles from the bar, in a lake. It had been weighed down by a brick. There was not much else to go on, so the case went cold. That was until nine years later in 1985. New Orleans detectives were sent to Kansas because a man confessed to ending the life of Mary Ann. The man's name is David Courtney. He claimed that he and his wife abducted Mary Ann before ending her life. He said that one night he was driving along the highway and then stopped at a country western bar in New Orleans. He noticed an intoxicated woman that couldn't unlock her car. David offered this woman a ride, which she finally accepted. While driving, she told him that her name was Mary Ann. He confessed to strangling her and then dumping her body near the Mississippi-Louisiana border. The police searched the entire area, but found nothing. This led her family to believe that Mary Ann might still be alive. What also helped the family keep their hopes up was that Mary Ann's daughter-in-law received a phone call from a woman in 1990. The woman claimed that she was Mary Ann's best friend and that the two of them were being held captive and were not allowed to call again. Mary Ann's family believed that David was not successful in strangling Mary Ann, while the police believed he was and that David merely misremembered the location where he put her. It would be another few decades before we would learn what really happened to Mary Ann. In December of 2017, the police announced they believed they solved the case. This is what they had to say. In November of 1976, eight months after Mary Ann disappeared, skeletal remains were found in a cornfield in Alabama just over the Mississippi border. It took two different police departments to solve this case. One police department knew about the disappearance of Mary Ann, and the other knew about the skeletal remains that were found. Mary Ann had a partial dental plate on her upper front teeth, the same as the Jane Doe that was found. The police went to Oklahoma, where the body was being stored in a warehouse and took DNA samples. They then took DNA samples from one of Mary Ann's daughters. In November of 2018, the DNA tests positively identified it as belonging to Mary Ann. Investigators still believe that David Courtney's confession is true. He is currently serving a life sentence. Tamara Milligrad lived in Newport, southwest of Melbourne in Australia. In September of 1971, she asked her parents if she could go to the Royal Melbourne show along with one of her friends from school. Her parents were a little hesitant at first, since she was only 15 years old, but they agreed since they assumed she would be back on the same day. The Royal Melbourne show is an event that started in 1848. Each year, there are a lot of incredible sights and there are also a lot of rides and other forms of entertainment. It was on September 18, 1971, that Tamara and her friend went to the show. At one point, Tamara told her friend that she needed some change for the $5 she had in her pocket, so they separated. After a while, Tamara's friend went to look for her when she did not return. Her friend got worried when she could not find her. The friend then called Tamara's parents, who called the police. They informed the police that their daughter went to the Royal Melbourne show and could not be found. The police learned from her parents that Tamara had a huge argument with her parents about the boyfriend she had at the time of her disappearance. 
Some of her friends also came forward telling the police that Tamara would often tell them she wanted to start a new life. This made the police believe that Tamara was not abducted but that she had actually ran away. Nevertheless, her family decided that they would not give up and that they would continue the search for her. One of Tamara's brothers, named Nick, said that they were always on wild goose chases trying to find her. They even hired a personal investigator. And over the years, there were a few supposed sightings of Tamara. One was at the Tarmac Hotel in Laverton. Another was that she had even slept at the Royal Melbourne Show for two nights before leaving St. Kilda and getting a job. But none of these were ever confirmed. Seventeen years after Tamara went missing, her father passed away. In his last moments, he begged his family never to stop searching for Tamara. In 2010, the police decided to reopen the case thanks to Tamara's mother who is now 85 years old. This was 39 years after Tamara went missing. She would be in her 50s. The family and police still believe that she ran away. Back in the 1970s, it was pretty simple to do. You could just move to a different part of the country, marry, and then you had a new life. In 2010, the disappearance of Tamara Milligrad was featured in the Missing Persons Week in Melbourne. One of the women that looked at this site and saw the photo of Tamara knew Tamara as her mother who had a different name. The woman who looked on the site was Karina Russell. She had lost her mother in a car accident. She and her sibling were very young when they lost their mom in 1976. Her mom's name was Pauline Tammy Russell, but she really looked like Tamara Milligrad. Karina decided to get in touch with the National Missing Persons Coordination Center to try to see if the woman in the photo could be her very own mom. DNA was taken from one of Tamara's brothers and was matched to the DNA of Karina. Now, 44 long years after Tamara disappeared, her family finally knew what happened. She left her family, moved to a different area in Victoria, Australia. She then changed her age from 15 to 18 and changed her name to Pauline Tammy Russell and had two kids before passing away in a car crash. For Tamara's mother, Luba, it was heartbreaking to learn that her daughter was not alive anymore. On the other hand, she was happy to finally know what had happened and also welcome her two grandchildren into her life.